Hey, hey friends, it's Tyler here from Rehab to Fab Designs, and today I am going to show you how to make some home decor um, for your house that um, will be pertinent and specialized to your style. Um, I recently made a video um, for Reels on Instagram, kind of a time-lapse video on how to do these, and it seems to be going viral, so I thought I would go ahead and do one for our YouTube channel. Um, disclaimer, I do have children in the background watching Disney. You might hear that on the background as well. I have a homeschooler too. Uh, this is one of the first ones we did. It is painted and has a decoupage paper on it. And it looks like this. So these are great for your kitchen decor, living room. You can put them on a coffee table. You can use it as a plant stand, um, basically whatever you like. Um, and then I have this one, which I just recently did. And it's just done in stain with a transfer as opposed to paper. Same legs, same style. Um, and I'll show you, we started out with just a plain piece of um, board. I think this is probably like a two by 12. My husband cuts them for me, sands them, and I just stained it. So that's all it is. So once you get that part done, um, you can add the decorative beads on the side with the wood rounds here, um, or you can leave it plain. You could add um, a wood applique across here if you want, if you have one that'll fit. Basically just whatever you want, you can um, customize it to whatever you need. Um, so this one, I haven't put the um, side um, the little rounds on yet. We'll do some of that. Um, this is some other things we've made, which is some coasters and it's made out of small pieces of board as well that we put feet on. And this has a stencil design on it. Um, here's another example that we've done. Similar thing, board, similar feet. And this one has a transfer that um, is put on it. These are all um, Dixie Bell products that I'm using, the transfers and the stencils um, and this decoupage paper that we're gonna do today. I am a content creator for Dixie Bell. Um, if you'd like to try any of these products out, we'd love for you to get them through our affiliate link. I'll put it in the description down below the video. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra, it just gives us a small portion to keep um, these videos coming to you. Um, so let's get started. These are wood rounds. I ordered these off of um, Amazon, you can get them super quick. You can probably pick them up at your crafting stores like Hobby Lobby or Michaels as well. And then you also can order feet there in bulk. So this is um, the ones that you'll see on the ones I just pulled up. I also have some different ones um, in this style and shape right here. And I really like these as well. Um, you can also do trays if you want. If you wanna use a thinner um, wood and put sides around it, that's a, also an option. So for this, you wanna make sure you have your wood. Obviously, you wanna get it prepped ahead of time, cut it to the size you want, the length you want, sand it down so it's nice and smooth. You can either choose to paint it um, or you can stain it. This one is done in Dixie Belle's new color, um, American Honey. This is their no pain gel stain. If you've never used it, it's a super easy stain to use. Um, it's not watery, it's gel stain. So it's kind of the consistency of like a pudding. And so it's really great for putting on and just wiping back. You can leave it on heavy if you wanna cover up your wood grain. If you want your wood grain to show, you're just gonna wipe it back. Um, and I've already done that and I'll kind of put in a video on that. I usually put mine on with a sponge. Um, any kind of high density type sponge like this. You can use a um, lint free cloth if you want. You can use these little sponges, whatever you want, put it on and then wipe it back with another lint free cloth or even a paper towel is usually what I use because they're quick and easy. So once you've done that, um, you can get ready to decorate. Um, you can use some different um, transfers if you want. Those are basically a um, image that's printed on sort of a sticker um, and you can rub it on and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then um, they're super easy. And then also paper. So this is a decoupage paper by Dixie Bell as well. This one's called Floral Ballerina. It has a floral design on one side and a ballerina on the other. Very pretty. If you've never used these papers, it's a pretty heavy weight. It's a rice paper. Um, and because it's a little heavier, um, it's um, not as likely to tear. Some papers you may use are really thin and when you try to um, put them on, you wanna get these on as wrinkle-free as possible when you put them on um, your furniture or your riser or whatever it is you're doing. You wanna try to rub all the wrinkles out. So um, 
some of the thinner papers, you'll have issues with the, the image will tear if you lay it down and you have a wrinkle and you wanna try to lift it up and then put it back down and rub the wrinkles out and they'll tear. And I have not had that happen with this paper because it's nice and thick and durable. Um, so here's the other side of this design. Isn't that pretty? It's got a ballerina. So I actually just use this side on a piece of furniture. I can drop a photo in and it. is super super pretty i love this picture um and i kind of hate to waste it on um just a riser but it'll be gorgeous nonetheless and hopefully we can sell some on etsy so i'm going to apply this here and then um we'll work on getting the legs on it and putting our little buttons on the side and hopefully have this done um in a quick amount of time so you can see how it's done and make your own all right so i counted out about 50 of these i got a plate here um, ideally you would put these on beforehand, um, but I was just playing with my stain and did a couple of boards in advance. And so I'm going to stain these now after the fact, and then I will glue them on the sides. I'm going to show you what the gel stain looks like. You do want to make sure you're wearing gloves anytime you're wearing, um, or wearing, anytime you're using stains because you will wear it. It will go through even one glove I have found. So I usually try to put two gloves on the hand that I'm using my dominant side, um, for my gel stain because it will go through undoubtedly one glove and it'll get all around the bed of my fingernail and make it super yucky and it's very difficult and takes several days to get out all right so here is the gel stain i'll kind of show you with my stir stick here hopefully i won't make a mess i'm gonna stir it up but this is the consistency it's kind of like chocolate pudding so it's really good um you know, if you're using solid wood on a piece and you got really pretty wood grain, you can use a um, water-based stain to kind of go over it. Water-based stain, you can wipe over it and still show your wood grain. However, if you're putting it on like a um, some wood that has some damage to it or if it's a veneer um, and it's not gonna cover good with that, you can use a gel stain and you'll get really good coverage because you can kind of control how you put it on, leave it a little thicker in areas. Um, so that's usually times when I, like to use my gel stain. So I'm gonna put my two pieces, or I'm sorry, my two gloves on here. Well, I was going to, that one just broke on me. We'll stick with one on this side. And then I'm gonna just use a sponge and I'm gonna start applying this to all these little beads, these little wood rounds that I have here on my plate. And you can just kind of paint over the top haphazardly. And then when you get ready, pick them up and go around the sides. Or we could apply them, glue them to our wood and then go around them as well. All right, so I have all my little rounds done that are gonna go here on the side of my piece. Now I'm gonna start working on my legs. These are made, um, they have a little lip on them here. It is rounded on the bottom, so it's not blunt, like which would be ideal for um, something that is gonna be used to sit on a flat surface. However, when you have four of them under your riser, it's nice and sturdy, so not a problem. And they do have a pre-drilled um, pre drilled hole in the middle, so you can use it to um, put your um, screws when you start to put them on your piece of wood. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these. I'm gonna paint these with my sponge and my gel stain. Um, and then we'll just let those dry and we'll be ready. In the meantime, we'll start working on our decoupage. Okay, I'm back here. Now we are going to glue on our little rounds, our little wooden rounds so we can make our little beads on the side. My hubby here beside me was so kind and went and marked all my um, spots for me. So like I had said earlier, usually it's better if you go ahead and put these on ahead of time, then you can paint and stain. It just so happened that I was um, staining boards the other day and so I did not get these on um, beforehand. So I've stained my pieces um, and I'll use those on this and then I'll just show you how we're gonna go ahead and do this. You can use whatever glue you like, your favorite. 
Um, we have Gorilla Glue and then also uh, Tight Bond. And I'm just gonna kind of put a little dot here where he made my marks. And then I'm gonna put my um, rounds or you can put it on the back of the rounds, whichever you prefer. It's just gonna get a little, um, I think, messier on your hands that way probably. So we'll just put a little dot on there and then come back with our wood rounds and start setting them on, kind of press them and it dries pretty quick. Um, and then you can kind of start working and getting your paint on. So make sure you have your little wood beads lined up in a straight row when doing this. You wanna make sure they're centered in the side of this board. Um, again, just apply them on where the glue dot is, gently press down, um, not so hard that you move them, um, but just press them down lightly and they will stay in place. And as, by the time you finish this row, you can just easily flip it to the other side. And when you get to the third side, the first side is already done, so you don't have to worry about them moving after that. Here's what it looks like once I have all my pieces on. We'll just continue doing that around all four sides and then we'll be ready for paint or stain. Okay, I have a new stain on my shirt here from my new Dixie Belle gel stain. So I went ahead and made some of these up too. So we've got these um, beads on pre-stain and or paint. So we'll have those ready for our next set. And now we are going to put these that we just stained um, on here. So I have this little piece of wood that my husband made up. It's just like some scrap wood that he put little tick marks on to um, use. That way we don't have to re-measure it out every time. So we'll use it to just hold right up here and um, make our marks on the stain so I know where to put these. Um, I can eyeball it as well, but I'll just go ahead and do this. That way, hopefully they line up a little bit better. Let me grab a pencil. All right, so now we are going to use our tight bond glue um, to apply here directly on the board. And then we're gonna put our new board, um, the little round wood beads on. You can also use um, Gorilla Glue if you want, whatever you happen to have handy. I'm gonna have to wait on this to drop down a little. I'm just gonna go ahead and come through and put all my dots and hope to kind of center it up as I go. So it looks like this. And then I will pick up my beads, place them down and mash them a little bit. Press on them so that they get the glue on them and stick where they're supposed to be. Then you just wanna make sure they're lined up straight and kinda of in the center of your wood. That's what it looks like. We'll continue going around all four sides. All right, so again, we are going to decoupage with the Floral Ballerina rice paper from Dixie Belle. This is what it looks like. It's a pretty big piece overall. Um, this is the whole thing for the floral side and then the ballerina. So we'll use um, half of this and we'll get two out of it. And that's just for that one design. We're gonna apply it with the clear coat, um, Dixie Bell top coat and a sponge. Um, that'll be our medium. And we're gonna cut it and get started. All right, I'm gonna use my new foam and dandy um, foam brush from Dixie Bell. These are a new item that they just started marketing. Um, hopefully, um, to replace these cheap ones um, like this. You can buy these in bulk in bags, but um, they always tear and end up being a hot mess. So we're gonna use this. We're gonna apply our clear, clear coat um, as our decoupage medium. Um, 
for our paper. I'm just gonna kind of take a look at this and see which side looks better um, as far as any dings or whatnot go. I think we'll put it on this side. All right, let's get started here. I think I should hit it, but let me make sure. Shake it up. All right, we're gonna apply our um, clear coat here with our brush. I'm probably gonna do about half. of the board. I'm just going to go ahead and I want the red and the blue on here. I'm going to go ahead and lay it and pull it up to the edge and we'll sand off any excess. Then I've got a squeegee here that I'm gonna use to um, press my image down. I use this to rub across it to press out any air that's in it. And then I'm gonna come back and add some more of this coat here. Uh, the good thing about these papers, that's what I was saying, they're a little um, thicker. So, gives you a little more opportunity to be able to lift it up um, and try to re um, position it if you need to. Some of the thinner papers you can't really do that with. Because it would tear. So once you get done um, putting your clear coat on the bottom and laying your paper over the top and get all your wrinkles out, hopefully it's kind of hard to get it perfect. But once you get done with that, we're going to come right back over the top with our clear coat again to seal it. And we are going to distress around the edges on this just because it'll be a little easier to hide any imperfections. Okay, and then we'll let this dry and then we'll come back around and tear it from the um, edges where our excess overlays. 
Okay guys, so this is dry now. I'll probably come back and put another coat over it because I'll seal the whole thing. Um, but it's pretty dry to the touch. So I'm just gonna come around my edges here to basically kind of tear off the excess paper. I'm gonna use sandpaper. This is actually a rad pad um, from Surf Prep or their medium sanding paper. And I'm just gonna go right around the edges of my wood. And it's just gonna make that paper let loose. See how easy that is? And then you got a nice clean line. You don't have to worry about it tearing. Same thing over here. Last one. And then if you want, um, you can distress it a little as well. Oh, I got my paper down on the side over there. No big deal. Just gonna kind of lift that up and we'll sand that off. And then if you want, you can kind of sand around it too and distress it just to kind of give it an older worn look. Um, I do usually do this on um, pieces like this because if it's gonna get high use in a kitchen or, you know, on a coffee table or wherever you think somebody's going to use it, it's going to get beat up no matter what we seal it with to protect it. It is going to get a little wear and tear on it. So it's a good idea to go ahead and scruff it up a little to begin with. And then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about people being like, oh, it's got a, a, a boo-boo on it now. I can see where it's got a little tear. Well, if you distress it, then you don't have to worry about it. So we'll kind of go around it like that just to kind of get it a little looser around the corner. If you want, you can kind of distress the whole thing. It'll lighten it, make it look a little more worn. Whatever you want. You can go around it and uh, dry brush if you want, some white paint and um, just whatever, whatever kind of look you're going for. Again, to make this, if you're selling them or if you're making it for your own home. for legs. Okay, for this one, we've got some little um, candle holder sticks that we're using for the legs. And my husband's building some holes in the bottom of them. And then we'll use a, um, I think it's called a hanger bolt that has um, no head on either side. So we can screw one into the leg and one into the board. So this is the screws that we're gonna use um, to attach our legs to the board. It's a hanger bolt and um, one and a half inch is what we're using. And the size would just depend on um, what size hole you're making in the leg itself or if it's pre-drilled. All right, so we're just gonna screw um, the hanger bolt into the leg down to about the middle portion and then we'll take the other side and put it into the board once you get it started you can use a set of uh, pliers to assist you with it so it's a little easier All right, so now we got it into the leg itself and we're gonna go ahead and screw it into the piece. This does take a little bit of muscle um, just because you need to put pressure on it as you're twisting it into place because if you don't, um, it can kind of lean to one side or the other and end up making your leg go on crooked. So be careful when you're doing this, kind of step back if you need to and look at it and make sure it stays nice and straight. Here's some photos of some risers we recently completed. As you can see, you can change up the feet to get a different style. You can also change them up by using either transfers, decoupaged paper, or stencils also make a really good idea. Um, and these are super cute and easy for your DIY home decor. As always, thanks for watching and please be sure and subscribe to our channel and like the video.